Heavenly Father, I thank you again that we can meet together to worship you this morning. Lord, that we come in your name. And I pray that this morning, as we sing the hymns and songs, as we look at your word, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to each one of us and draw us closer to yourself. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So interestingly, um, I've known that uh, from the YouTube statistics that there's a few people look at our recordings and I was talking to somebody at the ice cream giveaway yesterday who was telling me about various people that she's told about them and watched them. So that was really interesting. So welcome to anyone who's watching the recording on YouTube as well as to everyone who's here with us on Zoom Live at the moment. So it's lovely to have everyone with us, whether live or through the recording. And I hope that you all feel part of our worship this morning. So just moving on then, our first hymn is To God Be the Glory. This is a wonderful hymn with wonderful words. Uh, Jan and I are singing it, so it hasn't got quite the, the musicality of Johnny and the Mishy, but um, please join us in praising the name of our, our wonderful Lord. To God be the glory, great things he hath done, so lofty the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may know him. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every invitation oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he hath done isn't that a wonderful invitation to us this morning that we can come to god our father through jesus the son who as we've been thinking about especially over the last couple of weeks but which we think about every week 
went to the cross for each one of us, that when we come to him and we ask for his forgiveness and we acknowledge him as our Lord and Saviour, that we are one with the Father, have direct access into the very presence of a holy God. So today we're going to, our reading is going to be, it's quite a long reading for about um, Jesus revealing himself on the road to Emmaus. And um, we've got four different people are going to read it to us this morning. Um, so the, Pam's going to start, followed by Rosie, then Barb, and then Jan. So over to you, Pam, for the first little bit of the reading. Luke 24, verses 13 to 33. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Amos, um, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? <clears throat> About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in the word and the deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Thank you, uh, each of you, for uh, reading that to us. Let's move on now to our next song, which is We Have an Anchor. <laughs> Thank you. 
So thinking about that passage that was read to us by four different people this morning, quite, uh, quite a long passage about the road to Emmaus, but hard to read any less of it for it all to make sense. So it started off now that same day. Now that same day, this is talking about that first Easter Sunday, the day when Jesus rose from the dead. It's the same day. Yep. That, uh, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. Now I have to say, in previous times when I've read this, I've just thought that two of them were two of the twelve. But when we read on to the end, we read that they went back to Jerusalem and found the eleven, because they were it was twelve minus Judas, were in Jerusalem. So these two disciples were not, neither of them were, were one of the apostles from what we can work out. They were two other disciples of Jesus who were going to Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. So imagine that, uh, in a way, this is like us walking home from rugby. Yeah, it's just about the same distance, isn't it? And we come over and we have to cross a Roman road if we walk back from rugby. And they might have had to cross a Roman road, I don't know. But um, because Watling Street, that always amazes me when you think that Watling Street was originally built by the Romans. About the same time as Jesus was here on earth was when that road was originally built. That just always um, blows my mind a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it had the 50 limit then. You could still go over 50 miles an hour in those days. It was before they'd introduced speed limits on the hill. But um, uh, maybe there wasn't as much traffic. But anyway, um, they, they were, so they were walking back, the equivalent of walking back from rugby to Yelbertoft. And not many of us these days think about that as a normal walk that we, we do. But um, the disciples are going back, going to Emmaus on the road. And they're talking about everything that's happened. You just imagine having been part of this, um, what happened, uh, being there in Jerusalem on Good Friday, the trial, uh, the crucifixion, the things that happened, the get going dark and so many things. And then hearing these stories that people have seen Jesus risen from the dead and having to wander home with all of that going on in your mind, you just imagine they would have been talking about it, wouldn't, wouldn't they? You, you'd hardly be able to talk about anything else. And as they walked, wandered around the road talking, it says Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. So, um, it's, it's for some reason, they didn't recognise him. Why did God keep them from recognising him at that point? Jan and I were just discussing that earlier and thinking, well, probably because they needed, God needed them to listen to the explanation of the conversation that was going to take place. And if they just recognised him, then they'd have seen him and they'd have stopped listening and been full of excitement. Yeah. And um, you know how it is, if we're full of excitement, we're not always very good at learning and having things explained to us. But anyway, they were kept from recognising him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together? as you're walking along and it says they stood still their faces downcast you can imagine as they're walking along and somebody asks them what are you talking about it's like isn't it obvious what we're talking about don't you know what's gone on in jerusalem are you only a visitor don't don't you know what's happened they reply and jesus says what things then making them explain their perspective how often it is um, when somebody comes to you to talk to you about something um, one of the most important things is getting them to talk about their perspective and being able to uh, tell, you, tell you how they see it. And they said, well, about Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. And you think we might read that quickly and say that, but for people who were there at the time, you just imagine how you might say, describing the fact that Jesus was handed over and was crucified, and the horror of that word crucified to people who had been present at Jesus' crucifixion, or indeed any other crucifixion. And they said, but we'd hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all that took place. 
And so, even people who'd been with Jesus and been following Jesus really hadn't understood that he was more than a prophet at this point. So when they described him, they said he was a prophet. And if they looked at their Old Testament scriptures, they could look and see that there were prophets and there were prophets who had performed miracles through their history. So from their point of view, Jesus was a prophet. And then they said they'd hoped he was going to be the Messiah, the one who was going to redeem Israel. And as we talked about on Palm Sunday, people's perception of Israel being redeemed would have been about it being set free from the Romans and no longer being part of the Roman Empire. And then they go on to say about um, some of the women going to the tomb and the body wasn't there and they had a vision of angels who said, it was, it said he was still alive. But some of the companions had been to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. So they'd got the latest news from Jerusalem as they were setting out. They heard what had happened in Jerusalem. And then he says to them, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And we were talking about this passage in a Bible study a, couple, uh, a few weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, and saying it always seems a shame that nobody recorded what it was that he said when he said he, he went through and uh, showed them all the scriptures about things concerning himself. But it, it wasn't recorded. And we have to sort of work that out for ourselves. And we have some tools. I've used some reference material. I'm just going to talk about a few of the things in the scriptures that were said about Jesus concerning himself. Um, first of all, it was said right back in Genesis that he would descend from the tribe of Judah. Um, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, it says, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. What an incredible prophecy. Right back in Genesis, until he who it belongs to shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. Something that we clearly see looking back is talking about Jesus that he'd be the heir to the throne of David, the well-known passage that we know from Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 7, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Then where would he be born? Well, Micah tells us where he would be born, but you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel's, whose origin are from of old, from ancient times. That's Micah 5 and verse 2, if anyone's taking notes. That he'd be born of a virgin, Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. His triumphal entry, we read it on Palm Sunday, Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a coal, colt, the foal of a donkey. That he'd be silenced when accused. Isaiah 53, verse 7, again, well-known verses. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. That he suffered vicariously, so suffered in our place. Um, the word vicar comes from vicarious, but we won't go into that at the moment. But this, in this case, um, Jesus suffered vicariously, he suffered in our place. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. And yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. And um, there were many others, but going on to his resurrection, Psalm 16 and verse 10. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor 
will your faithful one see decay? Now, I know we went through those very quickly, and I don't suppose uh, we've taken all of those in, but it was just to illustrate how many things there are in the Old Testament Scriptures pointing to Jesus and Jesus coming in fulfillment of those things and I've got another 20 on my master list apart from the ones that we've got here all of which Jesus might have referred to when he when he was talking to these two disciples on the road to Emmaus showing him that everything had been prophesied in advance there's a lovely saying that I find really helpful in this respect it says the old is in the new Sorry, the new is in the old concealed and the old is in the new revealed. This is talking about the new and the old testament. So the new testament, the, all about Jesus, is concealed in the old testament. It's there when it comes out and you look back at it, but people couldn't see it looking forward. And um, the old is in the new revealed. But as we read the new testament, we can understand more and more of what the Old Testament was about. And some people try to think of the New Testament as being a complete replacement for the Old Testament. But it, it's not that way. The two work together. And it's important that we understand all of the, not that we understand in great depth, but the extent to which Jesus was prophesied in advance, because it's part of the verification of the gospel. That this is something that's real and was prophesied long before and prophesied in a way that there can be no question of the, that there were documents there that they ha that we know that the scriptures that we have the Old Testament scriptures we have are pretty much the same as the ones that Jesus had so all these things were there and prophesied and Jesus explained to these disciples on the road to Emmaus everything that was said about him still they didn't recognise him but they've had a lesson and then as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they argued, uh, sorry, they urged him strongly, stay with us for it's, it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So they've reached Yelbertoft, yeah, and um, it seems as if Jesus is going on to West Haddon. Um, but, um, but they say, no, no, you've walked far enough. The, it's nearly the end of the day. Stay with us here. And that was very much part of uh, Middle Eastern culture, that you'd open your home, you'd be hospitable to people. And um, a, uh, so that in a situation where someone would be walking with them and talking to them and explaining to them, and it seemed it was time that he should take a rest, they invited him to stay. Why don't you just stay the night here and you can carry on your journey in the morning? And so he went in to stay with them. And as he was there, if I can just um, open one page, or turn over one page at a time in my Bible, um, he sits for a meal, which is kind of what happens when you invite someone to stay, isn't it? You come in and uh, sort a meal out. Um, it's lovely when we can be spontaneous like that. I always find that some of the things that we do spontaneously with other people from a hospitality point of view are really, really special. And when you weren't expecting it and you meet somebody, oh, why don't you come back for something to eat? And there can be really, really special times. Well, this was a really, really special time because they were with Jesus at the table. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened and he disappeared from their sight. So at that point, with them at the table, he broke the bread and they realised that they'd seen Jesus and then he disappeared. And then they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Um, Bob was sharing a testimony. I'm sure he doesn't mind me uh, quoting some of uh, what he was what he was saying. I think during the uh, the Bible study during the week, but at a time when he knew that he turned away from the Lord, having um, given his life to the Lord, and then some difficult things happened in life, and he turned away from the Lord. And when he looked back, he could see that the Lord was walking with him on the road or the way along. I can see not. Bob nodding that I'm not misquoting him. Yeah, all good. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Yeah, that I'm not misquoting him. I have a similar testimony of being able to see 
the Lord working with me, even when I didn't realise he was there, even when I didn't recognise him, that he was there with his hand upon my life. And at some point it was revealed to me and I suddenly understood more. And it wasn't because I was clever, it wasn't because of anything that had suddenly meant that I was clever, it was because I came to a place of just realising that I needed him more. And it was at that point his Holy Spirit revealed him to me. And actually it was a place in a way of complete brokenness. And at that place of brokenness, suddenly I came to see Jesus in reality. And as we think about this road to Emmaus experience of people who've heard lots of things, whose minds are full of lots of teaching, and then they get some more teaching, yeah, but still they don't recognise that it's Jesus walking with them. And they didn't have that sense that it was him that had been walking and talking with them. You know, I believe that Jesus wants all of our lives to be the experience of walking and talking with him, as these people were walking and talking with him on the road to, uh, to, to Emmaus. That, that's how he wants our lives to be. And um, I think of the way in which at some point Jesus broke the bread. I've got a slice of bread. It wasn't communion in that sense, but he broke the bread. Um, I don't know whether it was leavened bread or unleavened bread they were eating. He broke the bread and the people recognised him. And this morning, I really want to encourage us all that we, if, if, if we feel, in a sense, we don't really know what it is, we don't really have that sense that uh, Jesus is walking alongside us and we can walk and talk with him, then let, this time in this service is for you. John and I are going to do something we haven't done before on Zoom, which is to sing sing a song live yeah so we're going to sing a song live so we'll see how that works the words i'm going to put the words up so you can see them as we're singing and um as we, as we sing um i hope these words are meaningful this is a very old song actually um it's one that i remember singing in church when i was a, a small boy um probably around five or six years old so that's quite a long time ago so i said it's an old song not as old as some of the hymns we sing and um it was uh, suddenly i have to tell, tell you this morning when i'm preparing to preach it's very common that i find myself awake in the night about half past two or three o'clock on a sunday morning and um that i'm praying and saying lord what is it that um, I've still got to grasp in this sermon yeah and what is it that I still need to get hold of and uh, that's a very common experience for me and um, it doesn't matter somehow it always works out and I get enough sleep in the end even if it is very rude and I fall asleep when I should be talking to other people and that sort of thing but um, thank you Lynn for the smile of acknowledgement of that um, but uh, uh, it sort of works out but um, as I was having that prayer this morning this song that I don't think I've sung in any kind of company I've sung it once or twice in my head but I don't think I've sung in any kind of company and since, since I was about seven years old it's not particularly a children's song but was was just going right in my head some of you will know it it's he lives so Jan and I are going to sing it join in the chorus if you if you want to or join in all of it if you want to um, as you pick it up if you don't know it and um, then I want to just use it as a focal point for our prayer. So let me just share the screen. And off we go. Okay. <laughs> Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is See his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. 
talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me I see his loving care, and though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. song he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he li he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way you ask me how I know he lives he lives within my heart and um, I just wanted to just ask us the question as we sing those words do we feel confident in what we're singing or do we feel gosh I wish that was really my faith and my experience and now without you only you know the answer to that question i'm just going to spend some time praying and if you're somebody who as we sing that is confident in uh is confident in knowing that's your experience then i want you to join with me in praying for anybody who might be with us this morning or listening on youtube for whom that isn't their experience and praying that they will truly recognize Jesus on the road and truly know that he is with them and truly know what it is to be able to walk with him and talk with him throughout life's journey so as I pray if you want to receive just stand before God and receive and if you want to join me in praying then let that be your attitude as well you know it this is entirely between each one of us and the lord so heavenly father i thank you that you sent jesus to be our savior and that in coming and living life as a human being in going to the cross in being raised from the dead and in sending the holy spirit to be with us your desire is that we should know you that we should walk with you and talk with you in our life and Lord, this morning I want to pray for anyone who might be with us on Zoom or might be watching the recording on YouTube, for whom that isn't their experience. I want to pray that you will touch them by your Holy Spirit. And that as you touch them by your Holy Spirit, they will know you in a new way. And come to a place where they can say, yeah, I know what it is. I have the Lord Jesus walking with me and talking with me every day. Lord, I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So Jan's going to share the screen again as we move on to our notices. Sorry. As we move on to our next hymn before the notices. And the next hymn is There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's Own Son. Another lovely 
lovely hymn with some really powerful words. of us, your Holy Spirit will work to bring about the work on earth that we have been singing about. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I notice this. Um, this afternoon, I'm sorry, I've just spotted a typo in the first line. There's a memorial service for Doreen Osborne. So Barry and Doreen were with the chapel for many years and Doreen died uh, last year uh, and um, ba Barry's organised a Zoom memorial service at three o'clock. If anyone wants to join and doesn't have the details, please contact Jan. I'm sure that one way or another you've got her uh, email or phone um, and she can give you the details. If you don't know how to contact Jan, you can ask me and I'll ask Jan to contact you because she knows what the information is. So um, that's a memorial service for Doreen at 3 p.m on zoom um it's not on this zoom meeting just to be clear so although it's on zoom it's on a different zoom meeting so it'll be slightly different joining it than it is for joining this meeting so um then at um, 2 30 this week we've got our bible study um on wednesday sorry on wednesday at 2 30 and then next um sunday our normal zoom service um all of the above meetings in the usual way join as we did today again advance notice that we've got a joint service at the village hall on july the 11th and we'll start to work out what that involves fairly soon okay um yeah 
those are the links if you want to know again if you want to know how to access anything and you're not sure just ask me or Jan and we can tell you so let's move on to our time of prayer this morning first of all let's take this opportunity again to thank Jesus for everything that he's done for us we can never say thank you enough Lord we do thank you for your gift of salvation we thank you for the amazing way in which you sent your son to this earth for us and we pray that you'll help us enter fully into the benefits of his death and resurrection of receiving the Holy Spirit to empower our lives drawing us closer to you and Lord we thank you for all of those who care for us and for love us and for we thank you for those that we care for and Lord we thank you for all of the things you're doing with us in this village in which we live and in wider areas as well we just thank you for your blessings upon us in so many different ways just before we go on to pray generally for people to know Jesus is there anything else that people would like to pray us us to pray about this morning if there is just a mute and say could I pray for us all for a minute yeah. yes just listen to those words of how do I know Jesus lives I shared some words recently with one or two people that I read in the scriptures and everyone here today has something they need to ask the Lord for help for and for comfort. Um, the words were some, ran something like this from the Psalms. It said, um, I called out to the Lord and I waited patiently for him. He turned to me and he found me a safe place to stand. And this is my prayer, Lord, for everyone here today. They will know your presence, that you do walk alongside us, even the times when we don't acknowledge you and the times that we haven't wanted to. But your love is steadfast, Lord, and I pray that everyone here will have the courage and the confidence to turn to you, knowing you will turn to them in love. And if whatever problem we give to you cannot be solved in the way that we would like we know that you give us the strength and the perspective to meet that situation full on knowing that you hold us in love and mercy as deep as deep as could ever be known and we thank you lord for that in jesus name amen 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 and thank you trisha if anybody else would like to either pray or ask for us to pray about something, just, just unmute and say. And Lord, as we've spoken for ourselves about wanting to know you more, Lord, we pray for people in our communities, those of us living in the Overtop, those of us living in other places. We pray for people that we know and love. We pray that many may come to see you as lord and savior we thank you for the privilege that we have in knowing you and pray that this might be known by many more who don't imagine what it is that they're missing lord but actually just really really need to know you lord we ask this in jesus name amen, amen. So shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And so we come to our last hymn, which is O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, Our Great Redeemer's Praise. Every soul of every soul of 